So this will be the royals. They messed up or what? This one's about Anne. So this is number three of a four-part series. So Princess Anne. If you like it, I hope you do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So look, there were royal scandals long before this group came along long before Anne and, Ch and Charles came along. And uh, I mean, the, the very fact that uh, Elizabeth is the queen is because of the scandal of her uncle and the divorced uh, Americans. So let's see what we can find out. You know, let's not pretend that uh, Harry invented royal scandal and uh, and discourse in the family, okay? And Princess Anne has seen it all, you know, and she's heard about it all. And she's been part of it, as a matter of fact. So go all the way back to Princess Margaret, Elizabeth's sister, and her island uh, sex resort on the island of Mustique. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff happened there. Then um, there was the uh, there was Lord Mountbatten. So he was always behind the scenes trying to arrange trysts for for Charles uh, and even wanted him to um, be with his own granddaughter, I believe. And then he gets blown up by the Irish uh, Irish uh, revolutionist. So there's that. Uh, then uh, then of course there's even uh, Prince Philip himself involved with the Profundo. Uh, uh, affair and actresses and women in the early uh, years of the marriages, the marriage with Elizabeth, and Elizabeth, and then uh, finally uh, we've got two more. We've got uh, Andrew and his actress Koo Stark, among other situations, and then Anne situations, and then Anne herself and her co her cop lover. So don't tell me Anne hasn't seen it all and knows how to deal with everything. So this is the Crow Tarot by M J. Cullinan, I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. It just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially Crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with Crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, She's spending time with her daughter River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought is going into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing, and I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake, but you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use. And they're beautiful cards. And you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often, at least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is the Crow Carol. So Princess Anne, Princess Anne, has the royal, did the royal family feel like they messed up with uh, Meghan and Harry? And Princess Anne, like I said, she's seen plenty of stuff go around. 
uh, let's see, this is the uh, Six of Pentacles, and this is Giving and Receiving, and this is the Three of Pentacles, and uh, that's uh, something for public display. I don't know, I don't think they have any significance in this, really. Uh, just clumsy. But yeah, I mean, there's been, um, and there will be in the future, you know, this is the end of it. I mean, imagine having to live your life under a magnifying glass, and is there anyone out there who hasn't done one thing that they would rather wasn't uh, talked about on television? All of us have got one thing, I think. So, Princess Anne, let's see, does does Princess Anne feel like she's uh, contributed to this um, debacle with Harry and Meghan? I mean, uh, it was it started with the two, the couple, uh, Harry and Meghan, perhaps feeling like they couldn't get help for Meghan's distress. That's supposedly how this whole thing starts, and the secrecy and the leaking to the press. So Anne probably doesn't wasn't involved with that, but once it became a thing, does she feel like she contributed to any of this situation? Okay, good or bad, just three cards. Let's see what we have here. So this is going to be one, two, and do you feel like you've contributed to this uh, discombobulation that we've got right now? With Harry and Megan. Signifier for that is the King of Pentacles, lots of worth. She knows what she's worth. And uh, I'm going to say um, this is not saying yes. I mean, it's a yes card, but it doesn't uh, jive with what we're asking. Does Anne feel like she's had something to do with this mess? Um, and so this is the Nine of Pentacles. Again, she's got more than everything, more than what she needs. Um, she uh, just doesn't feel like she's in this lane, I don't think. And then the final card for that is the uh, Nine of Swords, which is Nightmares, and because it is just a bunch of nightmares. Um, I don't know, this kind of says to me, no. I've got lots of value, I know what my value is, and this whole thing is just a nightmare. No, I don't think she was involved in it. But let's see, does she feel that the royal family has handled this poorly? And uh, that would be another question. Does Anne consider that the way the royal family has handled this has been inappropriate? And because she certainly does have to have an opinion, even if she steps back and lets the royal uh, publicity machine um, levers, which are pulled, by, I don't think at all by her, but by um, originally Prince Philip. I mean, he kind of got the ball rolling with uh, manipulating the press. But uh, so does she feel like um, since this has started, she's contributed, good or bad, to that uh, publicity machine? This will be four cards. One, two, three, four. And one flew out over here. I'm going to take it. If I can get it, that's fine then. This will just be a straight, lay them out, and see what they tell us. Five cards. This last one just fell out right out the screen. This Princess Anne thinks she's contributed to this uh, publicity situation, good or bad. Uh, King of Pentacles, no. She knows what her worth is. Do we have to repeat it again? We'll put that right up there. The next card we get out of that is death. Death. End of a cycle. It should be done. Next card. This uh, Again, repeating, just like it was. This whole thing is a nightmare. Next card. Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords, I think this, in her opinion, is left up to her mom. And the final card is the Page of Swords. If she has anything to do with this, it amounts to the Page of Swords, and not much more than that. This is uh, Anne right here. Okay, so, and swords, of course, being truth and rule and law, and she's carrying the load for her mom. She knows her place and she knows her value, and uh, she's tried to sidestep this, I think. I don't think she's been part of it at all. Now, for the last part of this, we're going to ask, does she feel that the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex are dealing with this in the right way. And we'll do a full dyadic cross. Six cards on that. Does Anne feel like the Duke and Duchess are dealing with this in a reasonable way? Let's see what she thinks. You know, she um, decided not to give her own children royal titles. That was her decision. And um, their marriages have, uh, you know, it's a little controversial. So let's see. Does she feel like Harry and Meghan are dealing with this in the correct manner? Six cards. One. Two. Three, four, five, and six. Let's see what we get here for this. This will be a full dyadic cross. 
Okay, six cards, does Anne feel like Harry and Megan are dealing with this in the correct manner? So this is the Three of Cups. So Three of Cups are celebrations. So that's a yes card right off the bat. That's the signifier of that, the Three of Cups. The uh, challenge to that, then, is the Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups is, of course, uh, the uh, warrior of the royal suite, and uh, he's carrying this uh, compassion in uh, on his back. So I'm not sure. So the celebrations challenged by... The Knight of Cups, um, emotional celebrations, challenged by by the action of the Knight of Cups. I still don't know who the Knight of Cups is. I think this would be Harry. This would be Harry with uh, his emotions on his sleeve, almost. Yeah, celebrations. Um, maybe she, this is saying to us, you know, uh, cheers to them for breaking out on their own. <clears throat> but the challenge is that Harry is carrying this on his sleeve. Let me get a drink here. The um, base of this reading is the Eight of Swords, and um, it's probably true that, that you know that, that they're hemmed in, that there are a lot of restrictions, and I think this is just Anne's practical perhaps view on the situation. This would be the uh, the couple, the Sussexes, and this is. The situation that they're in is not inescapable, but it is perilous. Okay, and in this card, this uh, ra this raven of this crow is more hemmed in than we see um, the situation on some of the other cards. Okay, in the past of this reading, Anne's uh, take on it is the Nine of Cups. Is that yeah? I mean, they have got everything they need. They're being rewarded well, and uh, if. if if it was her, if this was Anne, she would be on top of all that bounty. Okay. The sky of this reading is the Knight of Swords, and so Harry needs to drop that uh, cup of compassions and get some truth and some, some rules and some law uh, on his side. And let that be his guide, and perhaps that's what he's doing. And the final outcome for that is the Knight of Wands, and it's Harry again uh, taking action. So I think uh, she's not entirely um, against what they've done, but perhaps maybe the way they've done it. So let's take four more cards, make this a full Celtic cross to see if Anne feels uh, controversy or a, a, a part, a problem with the way they've done this. So for that question, whether Anne feels the way they've done this has been flawed, is a chariot. Okay, it's moved too fast. Everything in the royal family has its own pace, and this bulldozed forward. So we have that. The environment that that's in for Anne is the seven of coins and the seven of coins is you know the person kind of looking at the stack in the tree and saying have i done enough is this a good harvest is there more i could have done this uh, bird has feathers its nest with all this value as indeed harry and megan are trying to do and um, and perhaps uh, that's enough or should they get a little bit more she may be more on their side than we know the um hopes and fears for all of this Ah, these are the fears. So this is the uh, Four of Swords, and this tells us that it's time, just like she said uh, before, that this slows down, and uh, you, you take a break and really carefully, cautiously uh, go forward before you damage yourself. So that's her hope for all of this. And then the final outcome, but she knows because she's been around all these tempestuous affairs her entire life, she knows that compassion, uh, and she says right here, get in the way. Final outcome is the Ace of Wands. That's one big, clear action very carefully carried forward okay that's what this needs and that's what that's Anne's um, knowledge coming into play there so like that so yeah Anne has always been a player and uh, she was quite a looker in her in her younger days she's become a little bit more severe now but I'm really on Anne's side and I'm sure that she doesn't like what it's done to the monarchy and what it's done to the queen but as a practical side yeah she's telling us here with this uh, signifier card that uh, three of cups Celebrations are in order here, but they have to be tempered because of Harry carrying his emotions on his shoulder. And the underpinning the whole thing is the caution that has to be dealt with here. They feel trapped in, probably they more, are more trapped in than people uh, recognize. But the um, Nine of Cups just tells us that, you know, they've got everything they need. It's available to them. They don't have to rush about trying to gather everything together. Harry has to be more a Knight of uh, Swords, right? uh, worried more about truth, justice, and rules than uh, the emotions on his shoulder. And uh, the final outcome for the first part of that uh, full cut across then makes Harry the knight of wands with an with a plan okay a knight with a plan is what he needs to be so the self and um, and for that we get uh, Anne uh, saying the way that they've Harry 
uh, they've carried this on has just been a chariot ride, okay? And uh, what it needs to do is with this Seven of Pentacles is they need to stop and consider what they're feathering their nest with. Uh, the hopes and the fears is that they understand to take a break, uh, take a rest uh, before they uh, move too f fast and too f far at their uh, peril. And then the, but the final outcome in Anne's mind probably is that, uh, you know, they have to have a plan. Be a, uh, have a plan that you can carry forth carefully and um, practical and advice. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.